Hey Bricks community, this is John with another tutorial on hover scroll image with CSS. So we're going to look at how to build this component. It's not terribly hard. There are a few important details and some CSS uh, that goes along with it and we're going to explore all of those. Uh, I use this on my agency site to demonstrate uh, some of my uh, projects I've worked on. It makes a nice uh, animation uh, to show off your work, plus it doesn't take up a ton of space. Uh, so you could create uh, an archive page with all of your uh, projects you've worked on uh, and list all of them out and have a nice hover effect uh, to see what uh, your pages looked like. Uh, you could use this for a whole host of different examples, but that's how I use it. So let's uh, dive into the builder and see how you do this. So I've got a section and a container, and uh, what I'm going to do first is add a div. And inside the div, I'm going to add an image and an icon. Save that. I'm going to select the image first so that we can have something to work with. Let me turn this camera off for a second. Um, insert. So with uh, Firefox Dev, I can take full, uh, full page screenshots. That's how I've been making these. I think you can do it with some other browsers, but that's the one I use. So check that out, uh, how you would save a full uh, page screenshot. Uh, or else you're going to need... Uh, maybe a, a, an image that is a little longer uh, to take uh, into consideration with the scroll effect. All right, so before we get started, let's add some classes uh, to each one of our elements here. So I'm going to call this the scroll dash img underscore underscore uh, section. I'm going to copy this and reuse that. For the container, I'm going to do the same thing. Container. For the div, I'm going to do the same thing with div. Image and icon. Icon. All right. I highly recommend to use classes um, and you'll see why that uh, makes your life easier in a little bit. So this div is going to control the height and the width of uh, the image. I'm not going to control it with the image because I want the whole image. So I'm going to control it with the div. So let's go over to our div and go to our class and click it. And let's set the layout to 40 rim wide and 40, 45 rim tall. And you'll first notice that the image spills out and it doesn't take up the whole space. Let me make sure we don't have any other styles we need. I think that's it. Uh, so to solve the overflow, we come over to this miscellaneous section and type in hidden. So if you want it to overflow your parent uh, wrapper, leave it visible. If you want to hide it, you use hidden. I believe that's it. Yep, that should be the last uh, styling. Uh, parameter we need on the div wrapper. On the image, let's make sure we select our class, go over to the layout and set the width to 100% so that it fills up the entire space. The image to me looks a little blurry, so let's go and set that to full. Yeah, that looks a little bit better. 
Now let's jump into the style of the image and let's see. What you want to do is come over to your layout and set the width to 100, set the height to auto. Save that. And the position is going to be absolute. CSS absolute position. Let's see exactly what that means. Absolute. An element with absolute is positioned relative to the nearest position ancestor. So what that's saying is instead of things being stacked on top of each other, um, it, it has no positioned ancestor. It uses the document body and moves along with page scrolling. Uh, I'll let you read more about positioning absolute, but what it's going to do for us is allow our icon to now jump up to the top um, so it's not stacked on top of each other. So if we come back to layout, change that back uh, to relative, you'll notice that the icon's gone and that's not what we want. So let's do absolute to bring our icon up to view. I think that's it for now. Uh, there are some other transforms and CSS properties we need to look at, but we'll get to those in a second. All right, let's go move on to our icon and set it to, uh, let's do themeify and arrow down. Let's change it to white. I'm gonna go full white and do a background color, something like that. Save that. Let's add a border radius. Let's do 50%. That'll make it a full circle. And let's add some padding. Um, under layout and padding, let's do 10. Let's do one rim all the way across. All right. So now we've got this icon here that doesn't really look very good. Uh, in our example, we've got it directly in the center. So how do we do that? So if you go to the icon and go to margin and set to auto uh, and link, it'll jump to the middle, which is really nice. So let's go over what we've done so far. We've got our div layout, 40 rim high, 45, sorry, 45 rim high, 40 rim wide. Um, overflow is hidden. That's the div. Uh, that's it. On the image, we've got layout with 100%, height auto, position absolute. For the icon, we've got margin auto, padding one rim. You can use pixels or whatever units you want to use. That's not all the styles, but that's all we're going to need for now. Let's head over to our image and make sure you're on scroll image, underscore, underscore image class. And we're going to go to the transform and set translate Y to zero. That means in the unhovered or just your standard state, uh, the image is going to be at the very top. Up at the top here, you have what's called um, pseudo states. So this little arrow, you click it and then you can go into your hover. And now you see hovers active. We'll go back to transform and do translate Y and set this to none. Uh, that way we can put our own uh, unit in and we're gonna run a calc. Negative 100% plus 
plus the height of our div, which is 45 rim. So what you'll see is that jumps to the bottom. So if we do 40 rim, uh, it's not all the way at the bottom, 35 rim, not all the way at the bottom. We want 45 rim because that's the height of our container. Um, just negative 100 is too much, plus 10 rim, that's not enough. So 45 rim, the height of our uh, parent container. It's very important. So you might want to jot that down or just note that your uh, div is 45 rim high or 450 pixels, uh, whatever you, you want to set that at. All right, so when I hover it, it moves. It is exactly what we want. Let's look at that on the front end. All right, but we want it to move nice and smooth. So how do we do that? So it's under our CSS styling, we can set our transition and let's do, um, transform. See if we can do transform four seconds ease. Uh, you can put all right here, but I'm targeting the transform. Uh, so that will say, I only want to put this four second ease on the transform. Let's say if we wanted to do an opacity or opacity uh, and we wanted it to be something different, you know, we wouldn't, we want to target that differently. So if you put all, it's going to apply to everything or you can target just what you're uh, after. And in this case, it's a transform. So that in itself is really good enough for most use cases. Um, let's go to your div here and add a border. Just do five pixels, solid, red. You can see it a little bit better. Uh, that's borders around the parent div. And to make things even more fancy, you know, maybe you didn't want this icon. Uh, and if you didn't, that would be okay, you'd be done. I've got the icon here and what I want it to do is go away when I hover. Um, also, there's, there's this, uh, I guess it's just the way that it's working. Uh, when you hit that icon, it like does the image isn't hovered anymore. So what does that mean? Why is that happening? Um, if you were doing this with a background image on the div, I don't think that would matter as much. Uh, but when you're using an image that's absolute position with the icon, we need to set our pointer events to none. So I'm going to go in here and say, uh, scroll, Let's select all of that, copy that. And there's a couple ways we could do this, but this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, on this class, we can say pointer events none. And so what that does is it says when the mouse comes over the top of this, just don't interact with it at all. There, there's nothing to do with the mouse. Um, whoops. save that. Uh, the other way to do that would be to create its own class. So I've created one, sorry, let's come here called disable pointer events. Um, and actually what I'd wanted to say is pointer double dash none. Um, this is a modifier of a pointer. So if you were to put 
pointer none. Man, I like to copy that whole thing. Oh well, type it in and come into CSS. Um, you can say dot pointer double dash none. Pointer events none. That way we can reuse pointer none anytime we wanted to use this. That way it's not tied to that scroll image icon. Uh, another way you could do it is to put it in your style sheet uh, with a snippets manager like WP Codebox. Uh, but for now, you know, we'll use the builders because we're using the builder to control the CSS. So you can do that. Um, it looks like it's just saying uh, use the root to target the element wrapper. Um, you know, I'd prefer it to say pointer events none, but it looks like with bricks, it wants you to use root. So we'll not argue with that. Um, let's just delete that and do it with WP code box. So we can look at that. Yes, delete. All right. So come over to WP code box and new snippet type CSS scroll image hover sample all right so we're going to do auto reload after changes it's going to run on the header it's going to have a priority of 10 um, and it's going to run everywhere so let's do pointer double dash none pointer events none save that. So if I come back over here and add that class to my icon pointer double dash none. Save, save. Let's refresh. All right. So now when I hover over that, it doesn't zoom it back up to the top. That was a long winded explanation but that's three different ways that you can do it um, that's how i prefer it let's refresh the builder and see if that comes across yeah all right cool okay so that fixed that problem now we want to make this fade out so how do we do that um, with bricks, I don't think you can style where I hover over this image and have it uh, affect the icon. Um, if anybody knows how to do that with the builder, let me know. I'm going to do it with my snippets manager. So what did we call these? So what I want to do is come to the image and this is called scroll image underscore underscore image dot scroll dash image image and this is why we use this naming convention um, that way I know dot scroll image underscore icon you know I know what I'm dealing with I'm dealing with the icon I'm dealing with the image it's really easy to manage um, so if you look at the structure panel here, these are siblings, and I believe this is called a combinator. So CSS sibling combinator, adjacent sibling combinator. So what that means is when I'm going to be targeting siblings, I need to use the plus sign to do so. And I'll show a couple ways to do that differently, but what I'm going to say here is scroll dash image underscore underscore image target the hover state. What I want to do to the image icon is set its opacity to zero. Save. All right. So this is kind of annoying to come over 
uh, every time to this page. Let's see if this works. In WP code box, you can do preview. So <laughs> how cool is this? I love it. <laughs> so cool. Um, I got my page preview right there, right along with my CSS. But that's like, it's too fast. So if you recall, when we were messing with the CSS properties under the transform four seconds ease uh, on the image so that it nice and smooth scrolls to the bottom, we need to do the same thing when we're targeting the opacity. Um, let's see. Transition, transform four seconds. Uh, sorry, that's wrong. Opacity. So we want to target the opacity here. Save that. Nice. I think that's a little too slow. Let's speed it up. Let's do two seconds. Click save. Do one second. That's pretty nice. Now there's two ways to solve when I hover off, how it just pops back on. Like, that's no good. Um, so if we were to go to the builder or do it here, you can do it wherever you want to. I'll show you both ways. Um, so let's just copy this. And this is saying in the standard state, we want all transitions to be one second ease. Click save and there you go. Now it's nice and smooth. If you don't want to do it there, let's copy this. Delete that. You can come and do it in the builder, however you prefer. Let's go to the icon. Click the scroll image icon class, pop that in just like that. Let's hit save. Nice. Looks really good. All right, so you can do it here or you can do it here. Um, it just depends on how you wanna manage all of this. If you feel more comfortable writing the CSS, you can do it here. If you feel more comfortable doing it with the builder, you can do it with the builder. I don't think you can do this with the builder right now. Uh, again, if anybody knows how to do that with the builder, please let me know in the comments so I can learn something too, but I don't, I don't think so. Uh, let's add a couple more things. Let's do a rotate. So let's do a transform rotate 180 degrees. You'll learn that transition, transform are two very common things. Um, so now we've got this. Doop, doop, doop. It's kind of too fast though, isn't it? Like. That's no good. Um, so when we say transition opacity one second, if we hit it all instead of just the one, now it's gonna it's gonna target more than just the transition. Uh, sorry, more than just the transform and the opacity. It's gonna do everything. So. Maybe in this case, we just want to make it simple and use all. So we'd have to come back over here to our icon and also say all. That's pretty nice. And really, that's it. That's how you do it. Uh, it's quite a few steps, so we'll go over it one more time just to round it up. Uh, But yeah, I mean, all of this CSS right here, I'll paste that in the comments below. Um, 
This is all the handwritten CSS. The rest of it's done in the builder. All right, so let's start at the top real quick with our div, scroll image div, our layout, 40 rim width, 45 rim height. Uh, overflow is hidden. Drop down to our image. Click on your image class. Width is 100%, height is auto, position is absolute. Transform is zero on the Y. And the CSS is transform four second ease. On our hover for the image, we've got our transform to be calc, transform, uh, sorry, translate Y, calc, negative 100% plus 45 rim. On our icon, we've got a layout of margin auto to center it inside here. And we added a padding of one rim. Uh, what else we got? We got our background color, you can do whatever you want there. Our border, we have our radius set to 50. Yeah, 50 to get that nice full circle. And CSS, all one second ease. And again, you could have done that over here with this selector, um, defining it with CSS, but that's what the builder is doing on your behalf. What if you don't have some of these tools? What if you just want to use the builder? Um, I'm going to see if we can do that. So in WP code box, I'm going to disable our style. Uh, believe on the front end. Yeah. So WP code box is controlling what happens to the icon only. So up until our icon transition, uh, the builder is controlling everything. So what if you don't have those tools? I believe you can still do it by adding a code block. I like to keep my code blocks at the top and name them uh, something like scroll image styles. Let's delete this and we uh, need to put our CSS in between the style uh, tags. I'm going to hop over and grab these two classes and paste them in and hit execute code. If you see important, the code above will not run. Uh, the code above will run on your site. If you don't see the execute, come over to bricks, settings, and then under builder access. It's under builder access. Go to code execution and set who you want to be able to do that. Admin, editor. So I just have the admin and that will allow you to execute the code. So this is how you would do that without a third party add-on. The problem without some sort of snippet manager is you start having all of these styles inside your templates and like what if you lose one of them? So by having it in something like this, uh, you can uh, really just manage it better. Um, you know, I've got my bricks templates, any of my local snippets. Um, I've got some cloud snippets. I think I even have a template up here in the cloud. Uh, that's just the, I believe it's a JSON. Yeah, I think it's just a JSON string. So I, I think it's a great thing to have, but if you don't have anything like that, you can still do it with a code block.
Let's double check and make sure everything's working. Close that, refresh that. All right. So WP code block uh, snippet is disabled. Um, and these classes are controlled here. So you don't need to have that. And that is it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down in the comments. I hope this was useful. I think it's really cool. And it's all CSS. Thanks for watching and have a great rest of your day.